What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review. Thank you so much for joining me here at my YouTube channel. This is where I talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that I love to talk about. Movies, video games, comic books, TV shows. If it's geeky, if it's nerdy, I love to talk about it here. And what's nerdier than Shark Week? Yes, Shark Week is back, and I wanted to kind of give my thoughts on night one of Shark Week. The one I'm going to primarily talk about here is going to be Tyson vs. Jaws, because I think that's the one that had a lot of hype around it. Uh, but there were some other shows that were on last night. Um, first of all, there was a Josh Gates show on. I'm going to do a separate review of that, just because I have a history of reviewing Josh Gates stuff. You know, I love Expedition Unknown, Destination Truth. So yeah, I'll do the Josh Gates episode separately. Um, but Air Jaws, The Ultimate Breach Off, was the first one to come on. And that was, uh, it was fun to see Air Jaws return. Now, Air Jaws is, is a staple in Shark Week. But they did it a little bit different this year. They kind of had a contest where they had three people, three, three scientists. And each one kind of came up with their own method for getting a great white shark to breach at, at Seal Island. Uh, one of them did a uh, glow-in-the-dark seal decoy that he um, um, towed at night. The other one did, you know, kind of a standard seal decoy. And then another one used uh, drone technology to capture the breach. And the contest, put that aside, the contest was clearly edited in an order that it didn't really happen. Just to kind of create some more... Um, who's going to win uh, type drama. Um, but what was great in this episode was the breaches. There was a couple really fantastic breaches that included um, two of them that I thought were just phenomenal, where the sharks got completely out of the water with decoys in hand and then shaking the decoys as they, uh, as they went back into the water. One of the breaches was over 15 feet high. I've never seen a breach like that before. So um, that was really cool. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, you know what you get when you look when when you watch Air Jaws. You're gonna see scientists pulling stuff in the water at Seal Island, and sharks are gonna jump out of the water. A um, lot of fun. Uh, the next one was Shark Lockdown, uh, the hunt for the for 747, a shark that's so big it's named 747. Uh, this one honestly um, kind of bored me. It, it did. I mean, not all Shark Week episodes can be winners, and this one just kind of bored me a little bit. Um, it, it, you know, it was it was interesting um, to have the discussion. How are humans? How how does the way that COVID uh, affect humans? How's that affecting the ocean? How's that affecting the sharks? There's less activity in the water now. How does that affect the sharks? And they're talking about how sharks are bolder, coming closer to shore. That may or may not be true. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm sure that there is an impact that, um, you know, less water traffic is having on, on a, a aquatic life. And I think that there's probably going to have to be some more studies to be done long term to really determine what that impact has been. But it was interesting nonetheless. Uh, and then finally, the main event um, that I want to talk about is Tyson vs. Jaws Rumble on the Reef. Alright, so Shark Week has really, um, you know, initially Shark Week was this very educational week. That, that sharks were looked at in a very educational way. And the, 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 the process, the, the, the purpose, the purpose of Shark Week was to inform and educate and con and conservation. Conservation was key to Shark Week. But then, as happens, things tend to evolve and we get what is known as event programming where, um, or stunt programming. I mean, I feel like you could even call something like this stunt programming or event programming where they have to create, they have to manufacture an event to get people to tune in. And, you know, we, we've seen these in the past on Shark Week. Um, you know, Phelps versus Shark. Michael Phelps didn't race a shark. That was ridiculous. Um, last year, you know what is funny? Last year, I really liked one of the uh, um, uh, stunt programming shows. Uh, Eat, Pray, Chum. Remember that? With Adam, uh, Adam Devine and... Um, 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 gosh, who was in that? Um, uh, Rig Riggle. Uh, Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle. Um, that was funny. I had a good time watching Eat, Pray, Chum last year. I thought it was hilarious. I've watched it a couple times since just because I thought it was funny. <laughs> I think Rob Riggle's funny, though. So 
I don't know. Maybe I just have no taste. <laughs> um, but you get these event event stunt programming in Shark Week now, and Mike Tyson, he's think you know he's gonna make a comeback. He's gonna box again for charity. Yeah, we need to get Mike Tyson in the water with sharks right now. Stunt programming. Uh, and here's the thing, it works. I wanted to tune in. I wanted to tune in and watch Mike Tyson get in the water with sharks. I did. Um, it, the, the, and that's why these stunt program shows, that's why Shark Week has become more and more of a stunt program type, sh type show. Because people tune in. It's interesting. And um, watching Mike Tyson go through these steps to learn how to... Uh, associate with sharks it was interesting to watch you know he had three rounds three rounds against sharks the round one was the shark cage with lemon sharks he's in the cage and there's lemon sharks everywhere round two going down with lemon sharks without the cage and all he has is a stick to poke them with and then round three they're gonna get reef sharks and they're gonna grab them by the nose and rub their belly and tickle their nose and put them into a tectonic state and that's how Mike Tyson will win Rumble in the Reef. I mean, it's all very dramatic, right? And uh, and that is exactly how it played out in those steps. Um, and it was entertaining. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was entertaining to watch. Not particularly, uh, not particularly informative or educational. Uh, didn't really catch a whole lot of conservation themes going here. But if this type of show draws people into Shark Week and makes them tune in to some of the other more educational shows, then what's the harm? What's the harm? You know, if somebody's like, hey, I kind of like that Tyson versus uh, versus Jaws. What else does Shark Week have to offer? And then they watch some more of the educational con shows that focus on conserv uh, conservation. I see no issue with the stunt programming. And there's going to be more stunt programming this year. There's one with Shaq. Uh, there's one coming up with um, um, uh, Snoop. Um, uh, I think Adam Devine's back. So yeah, there's going to be more stunt programming this season, and that's okay as long as they also mix in uh, the the real the meat of Shark Week, uh, the the fatty seal of Shark Week. That's what we want to see: the the education, conservation. Um, but that's not to say that, that being entertained is a bad thing, because I was legitimately entertained by this. And there was some educational value in this, especially in the second dive, when they went down without a cage with the pole. Um, there was definitely some educational value there. They, the person who was diving with Tyson was breaking down shark behavior and, uh, and, and why they behave the way that they do. And it was entertaining. It was entertaining to see Tyson's reaction to some of it. Um, I believe that he was legitimately scared a few times. Uh, he vomited before going down for the last dive, <laughs> which was funny. Um, so, yeah, overall, it was a good episode. Overall, it was a good night of Shark Week. I didn't care for Shark Lockdown, but the other two shows I thought were pretty great. Um, tonight, we get Abandoned Waters, which... COVID-19 has changed the world's behavior that has presented shark researchers with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study the massive great whites at Australia's Neptune Island. With no human interaction, for the first time in decades, some of the biggest great white sharks on Earth are returning to their natural behaviors. Ooh. Allowing scientists to study them up close and in, pers and in personal ways that were nearly impossible before. This will interest me. You know, like I said, I think that more research needs to be done on the impact that COVID is having on, on the waters. Nine o'clock, stunt programming, shack attack. After surviving a shark encounter in, Sh in Shakta Shark Week, Shaquille O'Neal is back. And now he's on a mission to, t to determine which shark has, perfect, has the perfect predatory attack. But he can't do it alone. Shaq is deploying YouTube stars. Dude Perfect and Mark Rober to put various species to the test. Somehow these YouTube stars are becoming celebrities in their own right, which I think is a little silly, but whatever. And then finally, at 10 o'clock tonight, we have Jaws Awakens. Shark expert Chris Fallows joins Jeff Kerr and Dickie Chevelle to search for the largest male great white shark in the world. Together, Chris, Jeff, and Dickie explore the waters of New Zealand trying to find a 20-foot-long 
two-ton shark named Fred. Yeah, I think tonight's going to be a fun night of Shark Week. All three of those shows sound pretty promising. Um, I know that uh, females tend to be larger than males, you know, and Deep Blue is probably the largest female out there that we know of, and she's only a little bigger than 20 feet. It might be hard to find a 20-foot male, especially one named Fred. We'll see tonight, right? All right, guys. Uh, I really like Tyson versus Jaws. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was a good night of Shark Week. What did you think of the first night of Shark Week? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. Love to lo love to hear what you thought of Mike Tyson doing his thing, swimming with the sharks. Did you love all the boxing puns? Boy, I, boy, I, 12 rounds, 12 rounds, 12 rounds. It seemed like we had a 12 round. Mike Tyson looks like he just went 12 rounds. Mike Tyson just went 12 rounds. Well, we're going down to put a shark to sleep. This is the 12th round. <laughs> Boxing pun city. Um, by the way, I don't think Tyson's ever gone 12 rounds, has he? You know what? A boxing fan, let me know. Has Tyson gone 12 rounds before? I don't know. I don't think he has. But guys, what did you think of the first night of Shark Week? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your take on it. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for being here at the LQ Review, where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.